So this scene in the first reading, uh, Jacob is heading back to go see his brother Esau. Now you remember, he spent, I don't think we read this, but uh, he spent 14 years uh, working for his, his uncle Laban in order to get his wives, Leah and Rachel. And 14 years, and then his, his uncle is trying to be, you know, take all his stuff away from him and keep him, keep him working with him. All this stuff. Now, and this was all after he had fled Esau because what? He had stolen his birthright. He would stolen the blessing. All these things. And now he's heading back. Just heard about how he was going to be sending things ahead of him in order to like placate Esau to give back some of his birthright and all these things. And now it's the night before. He's got his wives, his children. And he's crossing this ford. And he's like, okay. I'm going to be seeing my brother Esau tomorrow. He knows he has to do this. He has to go and make peace with his brother. And now he's wrestling with it. Well, when uh, I was a sophomore in high school, uh, my parents told me, you have to take some sort of uh, sport. And I was like, why do I have to take a sport? I'm not all that great. You have to take a sport to be well-rounded so you can get into a college and all this stuff. But I do all these other things. Take a sport. So I took wrestling. My parents never made me take a sport again. Um, and I wasn't a good wrestler. Uh, that was one of the things I learned over the course of that winter. I was not a very good wrestler. Um, and we see Jacob here wrestling with God, that he's struggling with him through the night. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I would guess all of us have wrestled with God some night or other. There's something we knew we were supposed to do, and we don't want to do it, and we're struggling with it. And we go back and forth with Almighty God. I remember one particular day, it was uh, about 10 years ago, three months, two weeks and a day, um, when I found out the next day, I was going to be at a personnel board meeting and that we were going to be looking at who was going to be going to this obscure place called St. Patrick's in Pelham. And as I read through the whole thing, I'm saying, they're going to ask me to go. They're going to ask me to go. Ugh, they're going to ask me to go. And I didn't want to move. I was very happy in my parish where I was. And that night, I wrestled with God so much going back and forth and I had to keep saying Jesus I trust in you but then it would be wrestling and wrestling wrestling Jesus I trust in you Ugh. it's not even like I wanted to wrestle it just kept coming up the next day I got to the personnel board meeting and we were talking about all these other people that could go to St. Patrick's and then my name came up I was like here we go and uh, they didn't ask me to go here oh wait yes they did <laughs> Of course. Big surprise. Um, spoiler alert. But so we see this, this, this wrestling that we have with Almighty God. But the thing I found I wrestle with more than anything with Almighty God is my pride. That those things, it's like, but I don't want to do this. But I'd rather be in control of my life. But I want to do it this way. And I'm wrestling with God uh, and finally, sometimes I actually, I, I back down and my heart gets softened enough for him to prevail. But this pride can keep us from coming close to Almighty God. We look, we look at the gospel today. Jesus drives out a demon. And the crowds are amazed. But what do the Pharisees say? It was by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. The hardness of their hearts, their pride. Oh, may th that we may not get to be anywhere like that, where our hearts are so hardened that we can't even recognize the presence of Almighty God moving powerfully in our midst. This sin of pride, which we wrestle with, as we're wrestling with God and He's saying, would you just surrender to me? Would you just let me take over your life? Do you not know how much I love you? But I want to be in control. This sin of pride is so, so deep. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Benedict. And St. Benedict, among other things, he was the founder of Western monasticism. 
But he had these 12 steps to humility. This ladder of humility, how do we get there? The fear of God, self-denial, obedience, perseverance, repentance, serenity, self-abasement, prudence, silence, dignity, discretion, reverence. Now you're all set to become humble now. You got that all down, right? But these 12 steps of saying, okay, I'm going to let go of my own self in these little ways in order to get to the heart of God who is meek and humble of heart. He knew. He knew. Not only in the spiritual life in general, but living in community. Pride needed to be squashed. And whether it's in the community of marriage, whether it's in the community of a parish, whether it's in the community of broader family life, whatever it may look like, we need to allow God to wrestle with our pride and overcome our pride. It's the only way that we will be able to enter into the heart of God. This day as we continue to wrestle with those things which we struggle in our lives, especially pride, may we turn it over to the Lord and say, Lord, here, here I am. Here's my pride. Here's my whole self. I surrender to you.